Once upon a time, the two greatest circus performers in the world, an escapologist who could escape from any lock that was ever invented, and an acrobat who was so skilled it seemed as if she could actually fly, fell in love and got married. They performed some of the most incredible feats together anyone has ever seen and people would come from miles around. Kings, queens, celebrities and astronauts. And not just to see their skill, but also to see their love for each other, which was so deep that it was said that cats would purr as they passed them and dogs would weep with joy. They moved into a beautiful old house on the edge of town. And in the evenings they would walk and take the air. And each night the children of the town would wait in anticipation, hoping for a glimpse of the shiny white scarf that the acrobat always wore. For then they knew they had only to cry, tricks, tricks. And the great performers would instantly oblige with the most spectacular show just for them. But although they loved each other, Although they were famous and everyone loved them, they were sad. We have everything. We have everything that the world has to offer, said the wife. We have everything. But we do not have the one thing in the world we want most. But the one thing. We do not have a child. Patience, my love, the husband replied. Time is on our side, even time loves us. Oh, Matilda. But time is the one thing no one is master of. And as time passed and they grew quite old, and still they had no child. At night, they listened to the silence of their big empty house. And they would imagine how beautiful it would be if it was filled with the sounds of a child playing. Oh, Matilda, this is very sad. Do you want me to stop? Don't you dare. Their sadness overwhelmed them and drew them on to ever more dangerous feats as their work became the only place they could escape. The inescapable tragedy of their lives. And so it was, they decided to perform the most dangerous feat ever known to man. It, it is, is called, cool, said the husband, announcing the event to the world press with bated breath. The burning woman hurling through the air with dynamite in her hair over sharks and spiky objects caught by the man locked in the cage and it is the most dangerous feat ever known to man. It is our destiny, said his wife, smiling sadly and slipping her hand into his. It is where the loneliness of life has led us. And so the great day arrived. It was like the entire world had gathered to see the burning woman. With dynamite in her hair, over shocks and spiky objects caught by the man locked in a cage. Everything was arranged by the acrobat sister, a frightening woman who used to be an Olympic class amateur and who loved nothing better than to scare the children of the town. People whispered that in a dark and brooding heart, she resented her sister, both her success and her love. Suddenly, out came the escapologist, dressed as usual in his tight and spangly costume. But there's no sign of the acrobat, and no glimpse at all of a shiny white scarf. And instead of the musical fanfare, there was silence as he solemnly strode into the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the burning woman hurling through the air with dynamite.
gasped so loud that a passing aeroplane caught it on its instrumentation and reported it as an atmospheric phenomenon. Cancelled because my wife is pregnant! Oh, Matilda! Absolute silence. You could have heard a fly burp. Then suddenly, the audience jumped to its feet and roared in appreciation. Forgotten, and the applause went on for nearly an hour. So it has a happy ending. Forgotten by everyone except, that is, the acrobat's sister. When all had quietened down, she stepped forward and produced a contract. A, a contract? A contract you have signed to perform, perform this feat and perform, perform this feat you shall. No! I, I have paid for the pastes, publicity! The toilet facilities. If I can prepare them money back, where is my profit? A contract is a contract is a contract. My hands are tied. The burning woman crawling in the air with dynamite in her hair. Over shops and spiky objects, put by the man locked in a cage, will be performed and performed this day. scarf around her husband's neck. For luck, my love, she said, kissing him with the gentlest of kisses. Smile, we have done this a thousand times. But suddenly, she hugged him with the biggest hug in the world. So hard that he felt she would hug all the air out of him. And so they prepared themselves for the most dangerous feat that had ever been performed. The great escapologist had to escape from the cage Lean out, catch his wife with one hand, grab a fire extinguisher with the other, put out the flames on the specially designed dress within 12 seconds before they reached the dynamite and blew his wife's head off! Sorry. The trick started well. The moment the specially designed dress was set alight, the acrobat swung into the air. Crowd held their breath as she hurled over the sharks and spiky objects. One second, two seconds, they watched as the flames crept up the dress. Three seconds, four seconds, she began to reach out her arms towards the cage. Five seconds, six seconds, suddenly the padlocks pinned open and the huge chains fell away. Seven seconds, eight seconds, the door flung open and the escapologist reached out one huge muscle arm to catch his wife and the child. Nine seconds, ten seconds, oh, eleven seconds, and he grabs the hand, and, and, and suddenly the flames are covered in foam before they can both be blown to pieces. Oh, hooray! So the story does have a happy ending after all. No. No? No. Maybe it was the thought of their child. Maybe it was nerves, but the escapologist used just to touch too much foam and suddenly the hands became slippy and she fell. No. Was... was she okay? Did... Uh, did she survive? She broke every bone in her body except for the ones at the end of her little fingers. 
she didn't manage to live long enough to have their child. But the effort was too great. Love our little girl, she said. Love our daughter with all your heart. She is all we ever wanted. died. And then things got worse. What? Worse? Oh no, Matilda, not worse. They can't get worse. I'm afraid they did, because the escapologist was so kind that he never for one second blamed the evil sister for what had happened. In fact, he asked her to move in and help look after his daughter. She was nothing but cruel to the little girl, making her wash and iron and cook and clean and beating her if she did a thing wrong, but always in secret so that the escapologist never suspected a thing. And so, the poor little girl grew up with the meanest, cruelest, horriblest aunt you could possibly imagine! daughter cried herself to sleep alone in her room. She never said a single word about the evil aunt bullying and she didn't want to cause a fuss and so she suffered in silence. This only encouraged the woman to write her cruelties until one day she exploded. You no, are useless, useless filthy, nasty little, little creep. creep and she beat her and threw her into a dank, dark, dusty cellar, locked the door Watch out! But that day, the escapologist happened to go home early. And when he heard the sound of his daughter's tears, he smashed the door open! Trust of her own sister! She's 
she shown cruelty to the most precious reality of my marriage. Bullying children is a game, is it? Then let us see what this creature thinks she can do when the wrath of a grown man stands before her. Father, because he never came home, ever again.